Oscars fan. Hello. And we're going to talk about exponents. Now, I know a lot of you have already met these rules of exponents, but they can be confusing, so we thought we would go over them again. And, you know, rules in math are very handy, but sometimes you can forget them. So we're going to talk about why these work, and that might help you remember them. Should we start with multiplication, Mrs. Kurzman? Absolutely. All right, here we go. We're going to multiply together x squared times x to the third. So I like thinking, oh, well, x squared, isn't that just shorthand for x times x? Wow. Yeah. And x to the third, isn't that just x times x times x? I think so. So, heck, I'm just multiplying those together. It's really just x times x times x times x times x. What does that look like to you, Mrs. Kurzman? So is that a 5x, or is that x to the fifth? Well, let's see. It's x times x times x times x times x. That means I have x to the fifth. fifth. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I'm multiplying x times itself five times. I'm not multiplying x times five. I'm multiplying x times itself oh, five that's, times. That's the difference. That's the difference. I always get confused about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Of course, we can see the little shorthand when you multiply and the bases are the same. You can add together those exponents. 2 plus 3 is your 5. Neat. Yeah. All right, let's try division. We're getting crazy here. x to the fifth divided by x squared. I forget what that little rule is, so let's actually just write it out. x to the fifth is shorthand for x times x times x times x times x. x squared is shorthand for x times x. Well, last time I looked, x divided by x was 1. Here's another x divided by x. can divide those out. I'm left with x times x times x. Hey, what's that equal to? x to the? Third. Third. Wow. Now I think you can see what the little shorthand rule is. When you divide bases that are the same, you subtract the exponents. All right, we're going crazy now. Should we do some more? Absolutely. How about if I am x squared and I'm raising that to another power? I'm raising that to the third power, let's say. So we have a power to a power? We have a power to a power. Well, I know there's a rule, but I forget what it is. So let's do it this way. x squared is x times x. And I have three of those. So there's one x squared. There's a second x squared. There's a third x squared. I'm multiplying them all together. x times x times x times x times x times x. How many x's are multiplied together there, Mrs. Kurzman? Is that 6x or x raised to the 6th power? x raised to the 6th because, again, I'm multiplying x times itself 6 times. I see what's happening there. Yeah, isn't that cool? Very good. So you can see our little shorthand. When you raise something with an exponent to another exponent, the little shortcut is you multiply together those exponents. Oh my gosh, we are having some nice fun. Nicely done. All right. Let's see, what else do we have to do? What if I have like x times y raised to some exponent? Fourth. To the fourth. Pretty what good. What the heck? I know there's a rule for this, but let's do it out. That means x times y times x times y times x times y times x times y. And actually, there's a little invisible multiplication between all of these, isn't that? x times y times x times y times x times y times x times y. Hey! Well, let's multiply the x's together because those go together nicely. x times x times x times x. Oh! That's x to the fourth. y times y times y times y. Heck, that's y to the fourth. What's the little shortcut rule there? I think we're raising each variable to a power. That's exactly right. x to the fourth, x to the fourth, y to the fourth, y to the fourth. So, Mr. Stewart, sometimes I get confused if we have x, y, squared, and everything else is raised to the fourth power. Yes. All right, let's try some like that. That's an excellent one. Okay, let me erase some of these. 
So if I have, for example, x squared y, and the whole thing is raised to the fourth, is that what you had in mind? Yes. All right. Well, let's do it the long way, and then we'll do it the shorthand way. How's that? Very good. So that's going to be x squared times y times x squared times y times x squared times y times x squared times y. Oh my gosh, this is going to take a little bit of time. X squared, should I really go for it? That's really just x times x times y? Times x times x times y? Don't try this at home. This can get a little dangerous. <laughs> this is why we have shortcuts, because that gets a little crazy. Well, let's see. The x's multiply together nicely. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. x to the 8th is multiplied by itself 8 times. And the y? is multiplied by itself one, two, three, four times. Now, I don't think you want to write all those x's and y's. So let's look at the shortcut way to do that. And that's when I can use those little handy rules. The rule we talked about before was that x squared is raised to the fourth, and y is raised to the fourth. So we could just multiply the powers and we'll be good to go. Yeah, so look. When you raise an exponent to an exponent, you multiply those. So it's x squared raised to the fourth is x to the two times four, which is eight. Neat. What little invisible exponent is right there? I think that's a one. Yeah. So we're raising y to the one to the fourth. That's y to the one times four. And there we have a simplified. Very cool. All right. Let's so what see. if we have something that's raised to the zero power? Oh, yeah. How do we figure that out? Yeah. Well, this is interesting. Humor me a little bit here. What if I have x to the third divided by x to the third? Hmm. Yeah. If I did that out, that'd be x times x times x over x times x times x. Close divide. Close divide. Those divide. Heck, what am I left with? I think that's one whole. That's one. But what if I use the handy dandy little shortcut rule? In other words, when I'm dividing bases that are the same, I subtract the exponents. That would be x to the 3 minus 3, which is x to the Zero. Well, heck, it, when I did it this way, x to the third divided by x to the third was one. When I did it this way, it was x to the zero. What must that mean? I think that's a one, Mr. I agree. Any number other than zero itself raised to the zero is equal to one. That might seem counterintuitive, but it really does make sense when you do the math. And you can even try it at home. Grab your calculator, throw in any number you want. Give me a crazy number, Mrs. Crispin. Uh, let's say uh, 150. 150. 150 raised to the zero? One. Very good. How about negative 3 eighths raised to the zero? What's that going to equal? I think that's a one. That's a one. Oh, how about pi? Pi raised to the zero. That's a one. Nice. That is a nice rule to remember. It saves you a lot of time. Okay, you know, there are a couple other kind of funny ones. We're running out of time, so let's just go over those. When you have a negative exponent, That's right. Yeah. Like if you have x to the negative 3, we'll talk a little bit about why this works later on. But that negative 3 really means the same as 1 over x to the third. Neat. Yeah. I so can reciprocate it and yeah, make the it's power a reciprocal. Positive. Fancy word there. Like three to the negative two is really one over three squared, which of course is one over nine. Can I just leave it one over three squared? Well, you could, except that wouldn't be considered fully simplified. Whenever you want. Whenever you're doing math, you like to fully simplify things. Very nice. Multiply everything you can. All right, how 
how are we doing? I think we got them all. All right, this was fun. Let's do it again. Excellent. Bye. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Thank you, Mrs. Kirsten.